Joining us today is Florida Congressman Michael Waltz. Thank you very much, Congressman Waltz, for speaking with Voice of America. On February 15th, you introduced a House resolution calling on the United States to boycott the 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing. The resolution pointing to various human rights violations, as well as censorship and cover-ups from the Chinese Communist Party. Can you share with us why you think it's so important for the United States to boycott the Games? Well, I think the Games should be moved. Uh, I think the International Olympic Committee should move the Games to another location. Uh, and actually, my colleague, Senator Rick Scott, has been asking the International Olympic Committee to move the Games to another location for almost two years and has received nothing, silence in response. So unless the Games are moved, I do think we should boycott the Games, given uh, the gross and uh, indisputable cover-up of the coronavirus uh, that has gone on now for the last year, the arrest of journalists, the arrest of doctors, Chinese doctors who have tried to sound the alarm, the refusal of the Chinese Communist Party to share relevant data with the World Health Organization and the CDC and other global health organizations. And then I think most disturbingly, the ongoing genocide that is going on in Western China uh, with the Uyghur population, uh, the mass internments, the reports of forced rape and sterilization uh, that's going on, given these human rights abuses uh, and given that 180 international human rights organizations have also called for a boycott, I do not see how just 11 months from now we reward the Chinese Communist Party with the honor and with the benefit of hosting the Olympic Games and giving the party that international platform uh, for its ongoing cover-up and for its ongoing propaganda. Yeah, these issues are very troubling for a lot of people. Do you think Biden administration will share your position or even take a staunch position on this? How about the U.S. athletes who have invested years in training for this special moment? Well, my heart goes out for the athletes, uh, and that's why I think the game should be moved. I hope the Biden administration, if they're serious about human rights, if they're serious about the freedoms whether it is the freedom of religion, the freedom of assembly, uh, the freedom of speech that are ensconced in our uh, Constitution, that it'll take a leadership role in taking a stand, taking a stand with freedoms in Hong Kong, in Tibet, uh, in Western China, uh, with, with the Uyghurs, uh, and with, and with the over two million people around the world uh, that have been killed uh, by the coronavirus. Uh, we have to take a stand in line with our values. Mm -hmm. Now the resolution has been introduced. Do you plan to make this a uh, bipartisan effort or even an international one? And do you see a momentum is building for a successful uh, boycott this time? I'm in conversations with a number of Democrats who agree. I mean, their preference, as is mine, that is that the International Olympic Committee move the game so that all of our athletes can compete. But they also agree that we can't just turn a blind eye to genocide. We can't send our athletes there and put them in a position of just ignoring what's going on uh, uh, in, in China. And absolutely, actually, the, the, in terms of internationally, uh, the leader of the Canadian Conservative Party uh, has also called for a boycott. Uh, Australian MPs have called for the same. They need to stop the ongoing genocide. So I do think this is going to be a global effort. Mm -hmm. And let's, um, next, let's move on to another um, issue, Huawei. So recently, Huawei's founder said that he hopes the new administration will take an open policy for the benefits of the U.S. business and also the economic development of the United States. You are a member of House China Task Force. What's your response to that? And then is there a consensus um, in Congress across party lines about how the U.S. should deal with Huawei? Well, there, there's a realization in Congress, and this is why the, the, uh, the House China Task Force was so important. Uh, there's a realization that as long as Chairman Xi's laws stand in effect, and particularly the Chinese espionage law that requires any private sector company to provide the Communist Party with anything they are asked in terms of relevant data, that you know, even, even a company that has the best intentions uh, has no choice but to provide the authoritarian regime the data that it asks for. And as long as that's the case, 
Uh, I, do, I cannot in good conscience uh, allow uh, Huawei's infrastructure to, ha to harness uh, and to possibly pass back to Beijing uh, uh, the, the world's global data. Uh, we just we just can't have that. We certainly can't have that inside the United States. And I don't see how we have a productive relationship with allies as long as they have that infrastructure, knowing that Huawei has to provide uh, any data that it's asked for by the by the communist regime in Beijing. Mm -hmm. Is this a consensus between two parties in Congress? Well, there are certainly those, particularly on the Armed Services Committee, uh, the Intelligence Committee, the Department of Homeland Security, with both Republicans and Democrats that understand, uh, you know, the threat that having uh, that type of hardware and software inside our national infrastructure can provide. Yes, there is. There's consensus. Mm -hmm. So next, uh, the recent report shows uh, China's financial markets are drawing record chunk, uh, high chunks of global capital, particularly from U.S.-based investors, and um, uh, the market are poised to keep growing. As more money flows to China's markets, its political leader yeah. will have a clear mechanism to increase the country's political power. In the area of finance, commerce, and high tech, do you think the process of economic decoupling with China has now come to an end after the change of administration? Well, I, you know, I certainly hope not. One of the things that, uh, that the coronavirus really uncovered here in the United States is that we have created such a dependency, whether it is for personal protective equipment, uh, whether it's for masks, uh, our pharmaceutical industry, rare earth minerals. You know, one of the things that I'm talking about with, um, with the Democrats is they want to move to more of a green economy is our dependency on batteries. But yet, uh, but China has uh, uh, kind of dominated almost 90% now of the world's lithium market. So we need to bring that manufacturing back home uh, we need to have more of a balance in terms of our manufacturing and our dependencies on these on these certain things. And, uh, you know, our investment market, our capital market, I think, needs to get on board with that. I am all for capitalism. I am all for uh, those having the ability to grow their businesses, but not when it's at the expense of our national security. Uh, and when you have, uh, you know, Chairman Z openly talking about replacing the American dream with the China dream. Uh, and as long as that's an authoritarian uh, model of governance, you know, I can't support that. In the remarks earlier this month, President Biden defined China as our most serious competitor. White House also expressed the intention to develop a comprehensive strategy to deal with the issues and the threats posed by China in consultation with the Congress. Have you ever had any opportunity to communicate with the administration with uh, regard to China? Well, not yet. Uh, you know, we have some ongoing talks with Democrats uh, in the Congress. I was encouraged to see Biden's Secretary of State, uh, Tony Blinken, agree that what's going on in Western China is uh, genocide. I'm encouraged to see uh, the, uh, uh, President Biden's Pentagon established a military task force focused on uh, China competition. But, you know, I asked them, why is it just a military task force? We're talking about economic competition, unfair trade practices. You know, this is the, the, the theft of our IP out of our research institutions and our universities, the ongoing cyber attacks. This is much broader than just military. This is this is a whole of government competition. If you can only give one suggestion or the top one priority for the um, dealing with China, what's your first one, top one issue? It's the theft of our technology. Uh, we cannot continue to be a global leader uh, espousing our values, freedom of the press, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, when our technological edge is being outright stolen uh, from our universities, from our research institutions, and from our businesses. Uh, the Chinese Communist Party is leapfrogging uh, to the top globally by, by frankly, stealing uh, American technology. Uh, and that's the thing that we have to take head on. That concludes our conversation with Congressman Michael Waltz today. Thank you very much, Congressman Waltz, for your time and uh, joining us today. 
Okay, thank you so much. Thank you.